Greetings, my fellow pack members. This is Tristan of Primeval Pack Studios, and happy Halloween to all. For this month, I wanted to try something different for the channel, and this was inspired by Joanne Raptor Girl's own horror story for Halloween. Tonight, I begin a series for where I narrate my very first creepypasta for the channel. So turn off the lights, sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, snacks, and a few drinks, for I tell you one of the most scariest creepypastas of all time, and my favorite since I was little because of how absolutely terrifying it was. Join me tonight as we unravel the horrifying tale of one Zachary in his horrifying journey playing his childhood game, the NES Godzilla. When I was a little kid, the two things I loved most in life were Godzilla and NES games. So naturally, when Godzilla Monster of Monsters came out, it was like a dream come true. Both worlds combined to one. Well, almost. To sum it up, most of the game resolved around getting through very repetitive outer space levels while smashing up tanks and jets and then fighting against Godzilla's monster enemies from all the films. Overall, it was pretty mediocre, but back then I didn't care. When I got the game as a present for my 10th birthday, I played it day and night as much as I could. Unfortunately, I had traded the game for Amagon a year later, much to my regret for when I found out for what the game was like. Recently, I bought a new NES system, and through a lot of hunting and asking around, my friend Billy finally managed to find a copy of Godzilla Monster of Monsters. I was pumped to play my favorite childhood game, although it never even occurred to me to ask for where Billy found it. He also gave me a few other NES games, like Legend of Zelda, Bomberman, and some stupid thing called Action 52. But Godzilla had come first. I soon booted up the game, and the nostalgia came flooding back like a tidal wave. Godzilla's 8-bit theme song flooded proudly through the speakers, and I was soon gritting like an idiot. Some people laugh at me for playing such outdated games, but I've never had as much enjoyment for any other games than those on the NES. Those 8-bit games take me back for when things were much simpler, more... safe. But after what's happened with this game, I don't have those feelings anymore. I had forgotten for how quick the fun of smashing things as Godzilla wore off in the scrolling levels. The game bombards you with bullets and things crashing into you from every direction, and you're too big to avoid most of them. Although my excitement had worn down some, it wasn't long at all before I had got to my first boss. My first opponent? Gizora an obscure squid kaiju who had never been in a Godzilla movie. The most annoying thing about Gizora in this game is that he always backs you to a corner and starts smashing you with his tentacles, and you're unable to move until he gets off of you. 
This move doesn't do any damage by all means, but it could stall you until the timer runs out and you would have to start the fight all over again. And he regains health afterwards. It's as annoying as it sounds, believe me. And of course, he did it when I first fought him. Only for some reason, this caused the game to glitch up. Because once he started smacking me, he never stopped. The timer was supposed to end the fight in about 40 seconds, but this lasted for nearly 5 minutes. After a while, the graphics started to mess up, with little red blocks all over the place. But, eventually, I just took out the game, blew on it, and then started again. I wasn't about to let a little glitch stand in my way. So I started again, and this time, I defeated Gazora and the level's other boss, Mogira, without any problems. So then, it was on to the next planet, Mars. I browsed through the board, and then all of a sudden, I found something very unexpected. Where Varen's piece should have been, there was instead a piece representing Titanosaurus from Terror of Mechagodzilla. There were only 10 kaiju in this game, and Titanosaurus was not one of them. Or so I thought. Perhaps Titanosaurus was originally intended to be in the game, but was swapped out with Varun for some reason? But, nonetheless, I began to feel very excited. Not only was I playing my favorite game, but I was playing a prototype of some sort with a new monster. Needless to say, I ran through the levels as fast as I could to see Titanosaurus in action. I fought Gizora again and beat him before he could do his tentacle smack. But this time, the glitch started happening again when he died. Gizora's bright didn't sink to the bottom, but instead, he seemed to be devoured by the glitch. And his eyes started randomly spawning all over the screen. Which was the most creepiest thing I've ever seen in my life. It made me realize that these glitches with Gazora were my first warning signs that something was very wrong with this game. But, foolishly, I ignored it. And soon, I proceeded on to fight Mogira, who this time had a glitch of his very own. Mogira was twice the size he should have been, which startled me. He was also considerably harder to beat than usual. Which is to say, not at all. But soon, I defeated him. But when he died, another glitch happened. This happened very fast, so I was lucky to get a screen cap of it all. But what happened was that the giant Mogira sprite had started to shatter and melt. Also, if you look at the garbled text at the right corner of the screen, you'll kinda notice that there appears to be a burn in the cage. I still have no idea what that meant. Soon, I was about to fight Titanosaurus, the new monster. Although deep inside, I was worried as to what kind of glitches would happen this time with the fight. But, to my surprise, Titanosaurus looked just fine. Although all of the game's bipedal monsters were the same height, Titanosaurus was actually a bit taller. But, this was kinda accurate, cause Titanosaurus was actually taller than Godzilla in his film debut. Which, it was really awesome to look at. After a fun fight with the monster that wasn't supposed to be in the game, I took over the enemy base, and soon, I proceeded not to Jupiter like normal, but instead, a new world called Pathos.